Peter and Tamara are both the creative types. Yeah, their kitchen's a masterpiece of mess. There is enough wasted space in there to dance the tango. Yeah, well, something tells me it takes more than two to tango in this kitchen. Bacteria, vermin, clutter, and hidden hazards. It's a case for the Kitchen Crimes Unit. They gather evidence, identify suspects, and with $5,000, fix the kitchen to prevent future crime. We made the best of it. These things were in here when this house was a rental. So we bought it from the landlord, um, but uh, the stove broke about the second week that I lived here. Yeah. So um, you can't bake anything or make a turkey. But we cook pretty frequently, I think at least four five times a week, mm -hmm. and breakfast all the time. So all right. There's nothing better than cook pasta on a hot day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, should I wash my hands before I put it? <laughs> I don't know. It's too hard to keep track of everything. I'm just gonna go for it. Peter is a graphic artist with his own advertising agency, while Tamara designs and markets women's clothing. But neither of them seems able to make their large kitchen fit their artistic vision. We do have a microwave. Because there's no room for it, we keep it in the office, which is behind the kitchen. My office is full of papers and stuff, so it's, it's, yeah. It's not ideal. Did you see that ant the size of a black lab this morning? Yeah, I did. Uh, did you a, swat at it? Yeah. They're hard to kill those little buggies. If they get beyond a pound, they're very difficult <laughs> to kill. <laughs> We have a big problem with the ants, and um, we have large ones and small ones, and they seem to have a bit of a highway underneath our cabinets. And they predate us, I think. They were here when uh, I moved into the house about two years ago. But they still come in, and they still like it in our kitchen. Note how the steam from the stove goes nicely into the cereal cupboard. It keeps the chips fresh. It's one of the first things that attracted me about this kitchen. <laughs> Pretty scary. <laughs> True. We know the space isn't well utilized. We call this space the dance floor. It's not ideally situated. It uh, wasn't real well thought through. Crime scene secured. Armed with the tools of the trade, Rob and Marina get down to work. What is this white thing? It's housing ants. I can't tell what kind of ant this is. I'm gonna send it back to the lab and identify it. Take a look at this. Ta-da! What's the microwave doing all the way out here? It's in Tamara's office. Obviously, it doesn't fit in the kitchen. I think there's so much wasted space over here. It's kind of a dance floor. But the problem is, everything all the activities in the kitchen are really anchored in this tiny little corner of the kitchen. Because the fridge and the stove are right next to one another, it becomes really inefficient because really only one person can get in here to work. Can you see this crack in the wooden cutting board? Mm-hmm. Now you can't sanitize this properly. This is a perfect hiding spot for bacteria. Well, I'm going to take a sample of this chicken breast. I'm going to take it as is. I really don't want to overhandle this. Perfect candidate for salmonella. This is a perfect example of shelves that aren't working. These tall cereal boxes don't fit in here because the shelves are too narrow. And it's packed. There goes Rover Cam. It looks oh. like a moonscape. Nasty. <laughs> we got what some pasta. <laughs> underneath the stove. Look at them go. This looks like we're in outer space or something. It looks kind of moldy, actually. Do you think it's mold or dirt or what? It looks ancient. Another ant trap? This kitchen's infested with ants. Rover Cam's working overtime today. I don't think this, the oven part of the stove works. 
Well, this concludes this part of our investigation. We're gonna have some tough questions for these guys. Let's talk to them. Next, bugging the kitchen. Tamara and Peter may be artists, but despite their talents, their kitchen is not a pretty picture. A questionable cutting board, lots of wasted space, and a colony of ants have health inspector Rob Mancini and interior designer Marina Hildebrand scratching their heads. I want to introduce you to our secret weapon, Rover Cam. <laughs> Small and conspicuous and gets into places that we can't see. Oh, I shudder to think. <laughs> we found these little white houses, look like ant traps. Yeah, it's like the Audubon for ants in this <laughs> kitchen. <laughs> this tour starts roughly over here, and then they disperse somewhere here. And But the chips are up here, though. The they, they like the chips. That's right. Um, and they can go underneath. They often go underneath, actually. But I often find them in this, this space right here. That's that explains the ant trap. They continue on all the way underneath the cabinets on this little highway, this little ant Audubon, and up over this way. And earlier this summer, we did find a bunch of them in a bag that was in this cabinet that had Halloween lollipops in it. And they were very pleased with that. And it was a bit of a, a nest, I suspect. I noticed, Tamara, when you were talking about the superhighway, you open this. Uh, how do you store your food like this? I find it difficult because I'm short, and it's you know to reach anything is difficult for me. But yeah, our cereal boxes have to be horizontally stored. Contributing to the ants. Good point. So this is not good storage. How long have you owned that cutting board? The one with the crack in it. Um, <clears throat> I can't remember. Okay, and what types of food do you usually prepare on that cutting board? Everything, pretty much, you know, um, meat, chicken, uh, vegetables, toast, everything you could, you could think of has been on that cutting board at least once. Do you wash your vegetables prior to cooking, eating? Yes and no. <laughs> we have different theories about how clean vegetables are when they come out of the supermarket, so. Tamara likes to wash her vegetables. I eat them right out of the bag, so. Now we took a number of swab samples from your kitchen. I'm gonna take them back to the lab. We're gonna come back with the results. I'm gonna let you know exactly what we found. Well, it looks like I've isolated Listeria monocytogenes from the chicken breast in the refrigerator. The disease is called listeriosis. Nausea, abdominal cramps, vomiting, diarrhea, and fever. Rob, why does the body have such a violent reaction to this bug? It's because this bug actually produces a toxin, a poison if you will, hmm. during one phase of its growth. And that toxin is what gets into the food and that's what you're gonna ingest. Guess what else I found in that chicken breast? Fecal coliform count and actually isolated E. coli in the chicken breast. Not only in the chicken breast, the wooden cutting board, believe it or not, was blooming with fecal coliforms. Fecal coliforms are popular in the gut of humans and animals. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't be this popular in kitchens. To me, this kitchen looks very functional. It looks fairly spacious, and, and that's really deceiving. I would say 75% of the kitchen is not used. 75%? That sounds like a kitchen crime to me. The other thing we have to balance in this kitchen is the microwave. This is a great example of how Peter and Tamara aren't fully utilizing their storage. How is their work triangle in this kitchen? Is it working? The work triangle isn't working, actually. There are three points to good kitchen design. Preparation, cook, and clean. In this kitchen, we have the prep area, the cook zone, more cooking over here, and finally the cleanup area. That's not a work triangle, it's a work scribble. So we need to create some distance between the fridge
fridge and the stove in order to help the work triangle function most effectively. They have old cabinetry and the shelving in it doesn't allow for the larger boxes to stand up. They are down on their side and they're taking up a lot of space right here. And look at this space right here. It's sitting empty. This is a concern for me as well because this is a runway for food for the ants. One, two, three carpenter ants. Now they're called carpenter ants because they like to hollow the wood to make a nest. Now, we don't know if the nest is actually indoors or outdoors, but the best way to get rid of these ants is to find the nest and destroy it. You can't just spray them and kill them, otherwise they just spread to get back to the nest. Mm -hmm. You have to find the source in order to get rid of these ants. That's why I'm going to have to bring in the professional help. Good idea. Between the two of us, we're going to find a way to fix these problems. But first, we're going to have to break some bad news to this family. The ants are marching one by one while our couple is caught in a work triangle tangle and bacteria are living the good life. Next. That's an awfully big net. <laughs> yes, it is. I can't wait to see what we're infested with if you brought that to catch it. <laughs> the verdict is in. Guilty of the following kitchen crimes. Aiding and abetting germs, traffic violations, and trespassing. Rob, I hope Peter and Tamara are ready for the debriefing of their lab results. Well, it's not good news. Well, got the results. Okay. In the lab. See your cutting board? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> nice. Now that's what I think of your cutting board. Oh my Rob God. one, bacteria none. You notice that there was a crack in the cutting board? Yeah. That makes it very impossible for disinfection. You had fecal coliform greater than 1,600 per gram. What does that mean? It means it's very high and the potential to get you sick is there. But we also isolated the fecal coliform on your kitchen taps, backsplash tiles, the kitchen sink, and your dish rag. There are indicator bacteria that come from the intestines of humans and animals. Okay. But you can also get it from vegetables because it's in the soil, contaminated water. So when you bring vegetables to your kitchen, you can actually transfer fecal coliform bacteria here. Mm. Lack of proper hand washing can also contribute fecal okay. coliform bacteria. Sure. This takes me to the chicken that I analyzed from your refrigerator. Okay. Uh, we isolated E. coli huh. from chicken breast and a pathogen called Listeria monocytogenes. Hmm. So how does that get in there? It could have come from either handling it with your own hands or it could actually come from the farm. I'm pretty careful, like I wash my hands a lot. And um, so how is it like, is possible? And I'm usually the, well in that case of the chicken that you you tested, I had been the one who had been touching it. So how could have I been better about not contaminating anything or? I'm gonna go through proper hand washing technique. And again, I wanna stress the point that it could have been yourself, the handling it, or it could actually have been from the farm. I will provide you with my famous triple decker solution to get rid of all these germs in your kitchen. Okay. Marina? Great. Okay. Okay. Ah, okay, everybody take a breath. This is where it gets much better. <laughs> Amazing. You guys have this oven that doesn't work, right? <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> we have, a, we have no. a toaster oven. We have very small turkeys. Yes, <laughs> very small turkeys, no kidding. So that's a huge problem for me. The other thing, great big kitchen, but look, we're all crammed into this area. This is yeah. where all the action happens, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The prep space is here, the cook space is here, the, the storage space, the fridge is here. It's pretty <laughs> much impossible for one person to be working at one station, and let's say Peter's grabbing some burgers out of here. I mean, everyone's bumping into one another, right? Yeah. And this is not working for you because we have some tall items like cereal boxes, mm. right? So that is just contributing to the ants. It looks messy. It, this is not good storage. Now, this takes me to the ants I isolated. If you provide a food source, 
they're not gonna go anywhere. They're called carpenter ants because they like to hollow the wood to make a nest. Now, we don't know if the nest is actually indoors or outdoors, but the best way to get rid of these ants is to find the nest and destroy it. I don't want to uh, you know, induce too much fear into you guys, but I'm gonna need the exterminators. Peter, Tamara, allow me to introduce Lincoln, our pest expert. Carpenter ants are a wood destroying insect, okay? And, and this is a, a sample of a two by four that uh, the ants have burrowed out through and this would have been part of the nest. Okay, so they don't eat the wood actually, they just burrow and wait through it, correct? That's correct. If you can find this, you can treat it directly and eliminate the colony. I see. Okay, and then you also want to look for issues around the house to prevent a problem from reoccurring. So if you got a rainfall coming down here, it could saturate the wood in there. And when you get moisture, then you get wet wood, you get rotten wood, then you get ants. So the ants that we've identified in your kitchen as a problem are actually starting out here. They love moist wood. So we're gonna look around the kitchen to make sure there's no leaks. And we have to find the nest. It's the only way to get rid of these bugs. Okay. That's good news. Thank you. That'd be great. Thank you. With only $5,000 and a whole colony of ants to tackle, bringing this kitchen to justice will take heroic measures. Okay. Can I break this over my knee as well? I'm ant wrangling. Ant <laughs> wrangling. Yeah. Hmm. I'm going to place this tape down on the ground, pull out my secret weapon, and then once they eat and their bellies are full, I'm gonna follow them to the nest. I think we've got one in there already. Perfect, they took the bait. Come on, feed, feed. You're sure this is gonna work? Oh, I'm positive it's gonna work. He's come on, buddy. Over there, Come on, though. come on. Whew, he's fast. That's it, now let me follow you back, come on. My trap worked. I found the nest. Okay. It's right in this wooden step over here. This is my special insecticide. Sprays in four different directions. Watch this. Gets into all the cracks and crevices. Now it's time to finish the job. Next, the crime-free kitchen. Wow! Wasted space turning the work zone into a traffic jam. A superhighway of ants intersected by Bacteria Boulevard. The Kitchen Crimes Unit has put a stop to these infractions to get this kitchen back on the straight and narrow. Here we go, boys. Yeah. Wow! Oh my goodness! This, wow, I love Look it. Look at this place, this. this is unbelievable. Our team removed the shelf. So your cereal boxes aren't laying on their side, <laughs> contributing to that carpenter ant problem. The ant wrangler <laughs> actually found a nest outside by your steps. Okay. Really? Isolated it. We sprayed all the wood down with an insecticide, uh -huh. and we also sealed all your cracks and crevices to prevent the entry of any more carpenter ants. Oh, that's great. So the problem outdoors is not going to affect indoors. Wow, I love it. That's incredible. <laughs> Remember your chicken breast, Listeria monocytogenes? When you're handling chicken, use utensils. Never your hands, because there's a possibility of contaminating your hands or your hands contaminating the meat product. You want different colored cutting boards, okay? One for vegetables, breads, one for meat and meat products. And look, they don't break. No cracks or crevices. Wash wow. your hands, number one. Most important thing to do. Warm water, get the soap, really get in between the fingers for 20 seconds. Now, when you rinse your hands, start from the top and work your way down. Number two, bleach and water for sanitation. Okay. And number three, change your dish rag on a daily basis. That's what you need to get rid of the fecal coliform bacteria. It always works and it's gonna work for you. The oh microwave! <laughs> it's no longer in your office. Look at this yes. stove! Look it's at this! Stove. It works. Oh my god, look at the size it of it though. One wow. of the elements is the same size as this last stove we had. That's incredible. <laughs> now let's talk about what I'm really excited about in your kitchen. We restructured it. In the work triangle, we have the prep area, we have the cook area, right. and now we have the clean area. And you can 
start to see the triangle really well. It's very strong, okay? So your work triangle is spacious. You have a huge kitchen. Yeah. Now you actually yeah. have a huge kitchen. Yeah, that's brilliant. That's absolutely great.